You know, one of the most amazing things we're learning is that the brain is continually being sculpted by experience. And this, of course, happens in childhood, but it happens in adolescence and adulthood as well. And so we know that the experiences we have shapes the way the brain is structured. And this shaping takes the place in the connections among the neurons in the brain, and those connections, in a way, dance with the way the mind emerges. So how we think and how we feel, how we relate to ourselves and relate to others, has a lot to do with the kind of experiences we have, especially early on in life. Well, to be mindful, from a formal definition, means to be intentionally aware of experience as it's unfolding and not to be lost in judgments, so people call that non-judgmental. And it's done with intention, that is, you have the intention to be very present. Over time, if you practice this enough, and in a regular kind of way, hopefully every day, even if it's just for five minutes a day, what happens is the state of mindfulness can become a trait. From a brain point of view, what that means is that creating a state is the firing of neurons together in a certain fashion. And then once we create that state of neural firing, the neurons actually strengthen their connections with each other. So what is a temporary state becomes a long-term trait because you've changed the structure of the brain. For thousands of years, people have been practicing mindfulness in the East. It's also been a practice in the West, and not only in ancient times, but in modern times. In fact, when we look at cultures across our planet, all major cultures have a practice to encourage the members of the community to actually be present in the moment. And the claims have always been that this practice would help people be healthier, that it would promote well-being. And in recent times, we now have the science to suggest that those claims are actually true.